was Aunt May, was like a sister to me. She was uh, 14 years older than me, but she always shared her wisdom and knowledge, yes. and that's what I loved about her. If there was some place she had to go, she would say, you just, are you available? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I always have time for you. But the thing about her, she showed us wisdom, and she expressed her knowledge, and she never ever talked about anybody. She was always a kind, quiet person. You just don't find too many people like her in the world. But when she teaches you about love, love your brothers and your sisters. You never know where you're gonna be one day. She's here, but she showed us love and respect. And I'm just gonna read a word from the good book. <clears throat> she talked about the good book, you know. <laughs> she talked about love and growth. From the book of Second Peter's growth. But grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And that's how she was. Showing her love. Love to me, as everyone knows, means being loyal, ownership of who you are, valuing who you are, and encouraging each and every one of you. And that's what she did. She encouraged us and God bless the family. And stay strong no matter what. I love you, Aunt May, and I miss you. Amen. 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 And now we're going to hear some family sentiments, and we're going to hear first from the grandson. Let's receive him, Mr. Wayne Pitt, Jr. Let's receive him as he comes. Yes. And 
family is here today. This is Hempstead in the house. Um, we talked about the legacy, the pit legacy that she started. A lot of you knew my mom and a lot of you knew Aunt Dot. Imagine, Aunt Dot as an older sister and my mother as a younger sister. Aunt May was in the middle. She could be depending on to come through each and every time and she did every task with love. She honored the father in the way she walked in this earth. Yes. Hard working. She would tell stories about um, when her father got sick. Because she always had a little hustle in it, but you couldn't tell. <laughs> so she said when she was a little girl, she had to stop going to school because her father got injured and she had to help her mother. And I, it was funny because I said, wow, I didn't even realize my grandmother had a laundry business. Because we didn't consider that work a business. But that's what it was. And she quickly figured out, well, if I'm not going to be able to go to school and I got to do this, ways to, <coughs> sounds funny, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> to keep some of her earned money to herself, because my grandmother was the embodiment of Dorothy James and Kid Graysley. And she took her money. You know, typical parents don't like to charge their kids today. <laughs> That's not how we grew up. That's and right. we have to figure out ways that we put those old, values That's that right. have made. Yes. She was my actual mother longer than my mother lived. Yes. Yes. And I can say how proud I am. It was it was it got tough at the end. Yes. But she was grateful for everything. And she really in terms of suffering, three days. Mm. It was three days that she was bad. But we got a picture, if we go to, when you get to the repass, I'll show you. We got a 95 dancing with her great, great, great grandchildren, <laughs> Luna and my, daughter, my granddaughter, to happy birthday. And I got her at her day center at 94. And she did, I couldn't believe it, a whole two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she had so much energy and love. And that's, I think, what brings us all here today. I see my childhood friends, and I just, I'm struck. My cousin, they need to see yeah. it. I'm married. I thanks for those pictures that time. But they, Hempstead was an amazing place. Yes, it was. And we don't think about it as migration. We don't think about the challenges that they overcome. And I want to say this in King's Temple, where I got saved in Terry right up there. Um, praise be to God. <laughs> Sorry, I know my two minutes, I'm coming. <laughs> but I just want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank you for the love that you shared with her and allowed her to share with you. And I want us to really figure out ways that we can translate those lessons into sustainable habits in the next generation. We made a commitment that we're going to continue. Yes. But they figured out a way all those years ago to stay in touch yes, with each other and to instill values like how to scrub a floor and how to do something that you think is menial with dignity and pride yes, and yes. to respect your elders yes. at no matter what age. Because right. when she first moved in the building, she was a youngie and they respected the elders in the building, and then it, it, it kind of transitioned. That's called community. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I thank you all for coming. I love my family, and I love each of my Hempstead family. That's right. And right. thank you all. Amen. Is there a third generation cousin represented? If not, all right, so we're going to move on along and we're going to have our acknowledgments and the obituary reading by Miss Shelley Brazley. Let's say amen as she comes. Amen. Let's give her a little bit more encouragement.
greatness. And thank you so much for coming in love. Thank you, my brothers and sisters from Hempstead. I see the stand in the house, perfecting faith, and just everybody. I, 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 I so much appreciate you. from OGA, my sister Tina Hodge Bowles, who's been in the community forever. And um, they said something for Aunt May, and we are so grateful. Senior to, Tina does such an amazing job with the, not just the young people, but her seniors is her heart, and she has great programming for them. On behalf of our executive director, Ms. Tina Hodge Bowles, and the entire Operation Get Ahead Incorporated staff and members, we extend to you a heartfelt sympathy on the loss of your loved one, Mother May Pitt. Be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of lullaby, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, over all the way. He will take care of you. God will Whereas we believe the words of Jesus in John 14 that encourage us to let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will again, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may also be also. Whereas we bow in humble submission to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with all grace and thankfulness for the life she lived, our thoughts and prayers are truly with you during this moment of bereavement. Done by the order of Operation Get Ahead, OGA, Incorporated on this 30th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2024, respectfully submitted, Mrs. Tina Hodge Bowles, Executive Director. Amen. And from Zion Cathedral, to our ever faithful member, Shelly Brazley, and the entire family of the late Mother May Pitt. You are the descendants of a great and cherished pearl of history. The legacy you now inherit is the one, the, is the one as previous as your beloved who now sleeps with the Lord. Our compassion and love go out to you in the loss of your loved one. Please know that Zion Cathedral family and I are sharing your grief. We are with you, available to you, anxious to help lighten your load. There is an emptiness that only those who have lost a close relative can understand. Mm -hmm. We urge you and find comfort in the fact that even in death, we have Jesus. He has promised to never leave us comfortless. Be at rest in the glorious fulfillment of his promised word. As Christ lives you, rejoice. We exhort you to cherish the wonderful memories of, of the love shared and contributions your beloved made to family, friends, church, and community. Let this letter be a, a lover reminder that to you that God is with us, especially with those who mourn that they may be comforted. The profound sympathy of Bishop Frank A. White, Elder Jacolin White, Dr. Juliet White, the trustee board and extended family of Zion Cathedral Church of God in Christ are yours. Always know that for your daily strength, we are praying.
is a mixture of sunshine and rain, laughter, teardrops, pleasure and pain, low tides and high tides, mountain and plains, triumphs, defeats, losses and gains, and loves. God loves us in the sunshine. God loves us in the rain. He shares our times of happiness. He feels our grief and pain. So even in your sorrow, may you know that he is near and will comfort you always, both far and near, with hearts felt sympathy submitted by our own beloved Bishop Norman H. Lyons II, Pastor Sharon Lyons, and I have to say, this wonderful young lady that's navigating us through the service. Her name's not here, but I'm saying it anyway. Sister Juliet Lyons and the members of Fountain of Life Church Incorporated in Uniondale, New York. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Fountain of Life and the Lyons family. Now we have a lot of cards and, 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 and a lot of love that's been expressed to my family. We are so, so grateful. We appreciate you. We know how busy each and every one of you are. I'm going to read one card to represent all of the cards. And um, we definitely will be reaching out to each and every one of you at a later date. If only I could wish away your every pain, your every hardship, every challenge that you are facing. It would be my wish that these caring thoughts and words of support could make everything immediately better. Just know that I believe in you and I am hoping the kind of brighter days you deserve are ahead. Until then, I'm certain your strength will always carry you through. It's hard to know what to say at a time like this, but I know I care and that you're in my thoughts and you're not alone. Deepest condolences, Kim, what she put? Yeah, she put her married name, but she's from Hempstead. Kim Watts and family. I worked for a young couple 
with two kids and never went out. I was finished every night by eight and I could go wherever I wanted. I just did not like the sleeping work. When the employment contract ended, she moved to the historic Harriet Tubman House mm. on Laurel Avenue, right up the street, y'all. We yeah. helped a lot of our people back in the day and we yeah. didn't really try to do something about making that a historic landmark. Yeah. I, I drive by there now and I cringe. Anyway, where they had clean rooms for clean girls and took a job in the morning. Soon, her younger sister and two of her three brothers followed suit, then her parents and young son. But the Maryland ties remained strong as William remained in Maryland and his wife and children. There was frequent travels back and forth, keeping the family relationships intact. They often bemoan that James continued to take Route 40 all the way, although the quicker Interstate 95 was now available. <laughs> they love spending time with her siblings and prioritize traveling to Maryland every summer and Christmas to visit her brother William, his wife Darnell, and their children. As they got older, William and May strongly supported the first cousins to continue the tradition. Our last family gathering was May's 95th birthday, where she danced with her great grandnieces as they sang the birthday song, and she basked in love and affection of her family. After working a variety of jobs, she settled at the Island Inn, Westbury, where she worked with her brother James until her retirement in 1991. She would tell stories of the entertainers that stayed there, her favorite annual guest was Sammy Davis Jr. During his first visit there, in her section, the head of housekeeping, a European woman, <laughs> hurried in and took the tip that was left for the housekeeping staff. When May got to the suite of rooms, the tip was gone, and she knew that Sammy Davis Jr. did not sniff her after his week-long stay. Later, the woman gave May $10, saying that was a tip he left for her. She took it, didn't say anything, but the next year, she told Mr. Davis's valet what happened, and from then on, Mr. Davis specifically requested her section and placed $100 in her hand each year. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of money back then, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> A true quiet warrior, May Carey cared deeply for her family, friends, and neighbors. She rejoiced with those who rejoiced and mourned with those who mourned, often bringing food to the homes and celebrations of those she held dear. There was always a special request for her potato salad and pickled cucumbers and deviled eggs. May was particularly fond of her 20 Totten Street family where she resided for over 20 years. She loved being a part of the community, playing bingo, taking trips to Atlantic City, 